fellowship. Sound like a little loud. Am I a little loud? Maybe in the barrel air. Hallelujah. Well, welcome today, everyone. Blessings on you. What is it? One, about four weeks, four or five weeks to Easter. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? It's, uh, it, it, it's, things are going fast. But it's okay. It's be fun. I want to thank everyone who helped this week. I mean, we've had a couple of people in the last couple of weeks, and, and uh, you guys have been great helping out, working, doing uh, uh, a lot of good, a lot of good things, making it uh, as as good as it can be for the families. And so I want to tell you thank you and appreciate all that you all that you've done. Everyone that cooked or cleaned or uh, you know made made cakes or whatever, uh, it was it was important and. Uh, Thank you very much on behalf of the family. So, hey, I want to just remind you, I don't know if somebody may not heard, pray for Roger. Grimes, Roger had a, uh, I was going to say mild heart attack, but I don't know there is such a thing. Um, but he's, he had a couple of stents put in, and he is doing fine, and hopefully get out of the hospital today. Um, so. Where is he? Where is he? He's at Marietta Memorial. Uh, so, yeah. Donnie called me last night and she said, I just want you to know, Roger's fine. <laughs> and I, and I, I wanted to call you because I didn't want you to hear it from somebody else. <laughs> but he had a heart attack the other night. He said, I was like, goodness, Peggy and I went, uh, we were laughing after, not laughing at the heart attack, but laughing at the fact that sometimes people just won't call you, doesn't matter how, so, you know, how serious it is. So, uh, I want to tell you this too. Something like that happens in your family and you call me. You are not bothering me. That's why I'm here, okay? Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not an issue. You know, if something serious happens in your... You know, don't call me because you lost your keys or the cat's in the tree. You know? Oh, come on. What's that? Call the fire department. Call Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Cats always laying on their feet. They got up there, they'll get down. Right? Amen. But I just, the, the, you know, the, the difference in some people, you know, you are not bothering me if something happens in your family if you call me. So please don't, uh, don't, don't hesitate to call if you need, if you need prayer, you need, you know, somebody to be there with you. So anyway, enough said about that. Time to praise the Lord. Glad you're here today. Stand to your feet. Good to have, I, I told the praise and worship team, it's good to have somebody over here on this side. He's saved last week, we had three or four on this side. Amen. Amen. But I'm not sure I'm going to be able to preach with Ray and Debbie over here. I don't know that. But. <laughs> yeah, church will tell. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we, we love you and praise you today. Thank you, Father, that you are a good and a mighty and an awesome and a wonderful God. And Lord, you are... You're so faithful to your children. Lord, we thank you for delivering Roger and, uh, and bringing him through uh, that issue. And Lord, thank you that your hand is upon him and he's blessed and Dottie's blessed. And Lord, thank you that we get to be in your house today to worship you, to lift up the name of Jesus, to be in your presence, Lord, and to feel, uh, and to feel you here with us, to hear your voice speak to our hearts, Lord, and, and, and to you know, just to lead us and guide us in the way that we're to go. Your goal, Lord, is to change us into the image of Christ and make us more like him. And Father, we, we say to you today, you are the potter and we are the clay. Have your way with us, mold us and make us. Lord, let everything that we do here today lift up the name of Jesus and bring glory to the kingdom of Almighty God. And Lord, we just bless you today and, and say thank you and you are welcome here in this place, Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Oh, the guys just, we were singing that one song, and I, I, I had a, a picture in my head. You ever burn yourself? Yes. <laughs> Not real bad, but you didn't burn yourself while you're cooking. You know, you, and, you, and you put it under the cold water, and it just goes away. It's like, oh. Then you pull it out, and it burns again. You know, the only, only, the only way we stay at peace in our souls, we stay under that blessed fountain. 
that comes from the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. We stay, we stay under the blood and stay with Him, and it, it, it's all good. We pull out, we come out from underneath that covering, yeah. underneath that, you know, come out from underneath that blessing, and it, and it hurts again. <laughs> we're in back in enemy territory, and there's, you know, there's no other way to find peace in your soul and find salvation and a pathway back to Father God except through the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The other thing that struck me, I that song about 10,000 years and then on from there. You know when I want to cross, the, I want to cross the, that line praising God and keep praising God. You, know? you probably won't even lose, miss a breath. Yeah. Go right from this breath to that breath. From biological breath to eternal breath and and, and be praising with the saints and you get a crown and all you get to do is throw it in front of Jesus and say it's all all because of you it's all because of you amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. just want to is there anybody here today you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior would you like to do that today it's the greatest trade you will ever make God right. gives us beauty for amen. ashes he gives us he will trade us uh, he'll give us <laughs> eternal life for a 70 or 80 year life amen Amen. <clears throat> you get a 70 year warranty or a lifetime warranty. Which one is that? <laughs> I like the lifetime, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Our ushers are going to come prepare the table of the Lord this morning. And uh, if you're here today and you'd like to be, I know I already have at least one that would like to be anointed for a physical healing. So uh, if you if you come and pick up your elements, and then if you need, if you'd like to be anointed for physical healing, if you just Stand right here in the middle. We'll do that before we receive communion together. Amen. So, if you would, just come on down. Receive your elements this morning. Jack and Debbie, you guys just stand right behind them there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint Pat and we thank you, Lord. According to your word, he's healed. Your word says... Then you're sick among you, call the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, pray the prayer of faith, and they shall be healed. Lord, we stand on your word. We believe your word is true. Yes. And Father, we thank you that from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Lord, yes. the Pat can walk in hell and serve you, and to serve you all of his days, and to serve you, Father, without his physical body hindering. And Lord, we just bless him today. We call him holy yes. according to your word. We, we mix our faith with his in agreement today. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we anoint Lori this morning. We thank you, Father, that she is healed. According to your... Okay, for okay for Sean, Father, we, we just bless him today, Father. You know where Sean needs to be touched. You know what uh, what needs to happen in his life. Lord, I thank you that if he's not, if he's not a Christian, if he doesn't know you, Lord... Most of all, Father, that he would come to a place in his heart that the Holy Spirit would woo him and bring him in to a place where he gives his life to Jesus Christ, Lord, and his sins might be forgiven and that he has, has eternal life with you. Because, Lord, if he has it, your word says that he's dead already. And, Lord, we want to speak life over him. We want to speak healing over him. Father, but we most of all want to speak eternity over him, Father, that he has an eternity and a hope and a future with you. And so, Lord, we anoint him today. In Jesus' mighty name, and call him home, call him healed, and call him into the kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we anoint Doug right now. Father, we just pray over him. Father, we just pray that you that you touch his physical body. Father, that any infection, any disease, anything that, that might be hindering him, Lord, has to go in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says that every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And Father, whatever is hindering him today, Father, we command it to bow its knee to you. Your word that says, by his stripes, you were healed. And Father, we thank you. We thank you that that blood has never lost its power. Father, that, that your healing virtue can flow through us today. Same as it did uh, the blind men or the lepers or any, any of the stories in the Bible that we read. Lord, your word says you're not a respecter of persons. And Father, thank you that, that Doug is the Son of God. It's his right to be whole and healed because you provided it. You paid for it. And so, Lord, we declare it over his body right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, we anoint Lisa today. 
we declare her whole and healed. Father, she's a woman of God, serves you with all of her heart. And Lord, I just, just thank you, Father, that, uh, that you just touch her. Father, that stress has to go. Father, that fear has to go. Father, that, that everything, anything that afflicts her has to go. Father, I thank you that she has the peace that passes all understanding. She has the joy of the Lord. And Father, I thank you that as that joy arises in her heart, Father, she's whole and she's cleansed. Father, I thank you that, uh, that any ailments that might be coming, Lord, from, that, from, from here, Lord, have to go in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I just declare, just declare that peace again over her. Father, I pray that peace would descend, your peace would descend over her, Lord. Father, and, and that you would that you would show yourself strong in her life and in her children, children's life and her grandchildren's life, Father. I thank you, Father, that you, you are the one. We just ask you to come and glorify your name in her life right now. Father, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We just declare healing over her right now. Joy over her right now. Peace over her right now. Father, pray, pray over her. Please said out. Lord, I just bless them right now. And Father, we just we pray, Father, that as, as they have been faithful to you, Lord, that you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they won't be able to contain. Father, I thank you that that uh, as they have been faithful to serve you and faithful to tithe and faithful to, to give, Father, in the kingdom, give of themselves and serve you, Father. And Lord, that uh, that you will bless them. And your word, your word doesn't say that you'll meet our needs. It says that you'll meet our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And we'll just speak that over their house right now. The so Father, just, just, just declare a blessing over their house in Jesus' mighty name. That Jesus would reign there. The name of the Lord is blessed there. Father, that when, uh, when their kids come in, Lord, that they'll feel the presence of, of God and know that. Uh, they're in a place uh, where, where you dwell, in a place where you are glorified. Lord, it'll change their lives as well. And we just bless you and thank you for, for Alan and Lisa. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I've asked Jack and, and Debbie to pray over the bread and the cup today. So, uh, I, it was I, it was spur of the moment. So, Oh, Pat, you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we anoint Pat right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we just declare life over him and health over him. Father, I thank you for uh, for his life, and Father, thank you for uh, Father that, that you speak to him, Lord, and, and you have given him gifts and talents to serve the body of Christ. And Lord, I know the desires of his heart as they go back to China, and Lord, we just anoint him and pray that this body will line up with the Word of God, and Father, that you would you, you would give him the mind of Christ, Lord, that he'd be able to. Uh, to serve you and to speak uh, your words to people around him. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you 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 heal his finances and that you you make it an open door for him to be able to go back and serve you in China as he wants to do. But Lord, we declare healing over him right now and say say by by the stripes that our Lord took that he is healed. And Lord, thank you that as a son of God that he walks in health and he walks in your healing and your freedom and your joy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Sorry about that. Jesus for being able to walk that path 
and for loving us and being able, dear Lord, to take those beatings because you loved us. Please take the bread. start out this prayer with two scriptures and the one comes from John 16 verse 33 this was Jesus speaking these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulations but be of good cheer I have overcome the world hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm also going to look in Revelation and uh Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. Again, Jesus speaking. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. The second death is not the grave. The second death is separation from God. Yes. Eternal separation. Amen. We will overcome because of Jesus Christ. Amen. We may, we may go through death in this life, but we will overcome and not have that second death, that separation. Amen. 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 The blood of Jesus was shed for us already. He was the overcomer. Because of Him, the things that we go through, some very visible, some things are heartaches that are locked inside that no one knows but you. But we will be overcomers because of Christ Jesus. He's already paid the price. He gave the blood. This is not the blood. This is a symbol of his blood Amen. and a symbol of his body. But we honor him. And we, <clears throat> Lord, I just right now ask you to touch each person here today that we may all be overcomers. That through you, you've already paid the price. You lived the life and you showed us that in this body, we can live for our Heavenly Father. And I, I just thank you for that. And I thank you that that blood that you already gave is powerful enough to overcome anything that has been in our lives or is coming our way. In your name I do this, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, the word says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So who's got a testimony today? Anybody? Okay. Miss Allen saw that one first. thing is, some of you know that our Missy moved home with us about three weeks ago. She had a job in under a week, and she is finishing her second week on the job, and all of her <coughs> licensure for her special transfer license to West Virginia has now been sent. Praise God. And God Hallelujah. is just making it away. Prepared away. Amen. Who else? Anybody else? Douglas. Uh, Yeah. Uh, they're going to open it up on in July. And uh, go to the public. Is that part of the Creation Museum down yeah, there? Yeah, Ken Ham. Ken Ham. Ham's Ken Ham. He's uh, behind. And just like the Creation Museum, when they were trying to get funding, you know, uh, from donations and stuff, to open the Creation Museum back in the early 2000s. Uh, and everybody said, yeah, right, you know. And they did it. And they they said, anyway, they had to have $30 million. $29 million for this project, well, for their part of it, you know, and they were almost hit the, hit the praise go. Yeah, so Amen. I'm thankful for it. That'd be cool to see. Amen. Who else? Sure. You guys look like you're lined up for a firing squad. Or that. <laughs> <laughs> better, better. Uh, <laughs> there's one in the blue shirt. Lined up. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Who else? Jerry, I'm sorry. No, I just, I've had such support from my friends and my church family, and um, Linda sends me a hug <laughs> almost every day. She just texts me, just sends me a great big hug. Amen. And that just means so much to people. I can feel, I can feel, I've heard people say that. 
Pastor, I'd just like to thank the Lord for his blessings every day and the blessings in my business. It, it, it just uh, never ceases to amaze me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just think he's going to run out and he never does. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? We all good? Pastor, Chuck gets operated on Tuesday. Uh, he's going to be down for about a minute. Most of you know there's a squad involved in the accident the other day. I'll talk about it some other time. My guy is deserving of Matt and Dave. We had a patient in there, and the young man that did that, you know, they were all very confused, hurting, healing, but... All alive. They're, they're all alive. Squads are replaceable. Uh, sometimes I'll talk about that. But I'll like, tell you what, I got one I can tell you. <laughs> 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 maybe you uh, yeah, they can make them borrow. Anyways, thank you for your prayers, because I, I know many of you <coughs> pray for us. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody else? If there's nobody else, I'll preach. Well, we don't have to. Okay. Jerry? Somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Where our kids can be dismissed. And <laughs> I'd like a chair. <laughs> Oh yeah, who does? Oh, okay. Did everybody settle down. I, I messed up, man. Out of baby Asher, stay on it. Susie's receiving our tithes and offerings. I'm just gonna sit here and look pretty for you, so. I'm going to read from uh, Matthew 15, uh, 21 through 28. I'm using my phone because I have the NIV on here and I have my like King James, but the NIV prefer the NIV. Anyway, um, starting verse 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. 
A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request granted. And her daughter was healed that moment. Um, before, what, what led her up to that was she had been searching for answers for her daughter to be delivered from a, a demon possession. And she was suffering from that. And her whole family was suffering from that. And I have heard the scripture earlier in the week when I was listening to uh, some of my devotions on the radio. And um, anyway, the Lord had spoke to me that many times we're searching to the wrong God. We're going to the wrong answers to look for those healings to be delivered from the different things that we're having issues with. Um, and because of that, when we're continually doing that, we're not being granted the righteousness that we deserve. And the woman, because of her faithfulness, being persistent, even though she was not getting the answers from the false gods, she had heard about the Lord being in town, and so she went running after him and was persistent, even though the disciples kept urging the Lord to continue on and for her to quit crying out. They did not understand at that moment the power of God. But she did, and she continued to reach out. And just as we came to the table to the Lord this morning, we come to grab a hold of those crumbs that have fallen from the table. And we need to be continually doing that as we are searching for God for answers, whatever it might be, financial, marriage, whatever it might be that you are struggling with. We need to continue to grab a hold of that crumb that had fell from the table and realize that that crumb feeds a multitude. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray now. Lord, we just come before you and we praise you and thank you for the offerings that we have for you in our tithes, Father. For if it was not for our obedience to you, we would not even have that. And Lord, I ask that you would continue to help us search our hearts that we might be found worthy in your eyes, Father. That we would be cleansed from all of our unrighteousness. That we would come to you and to your table, Father. And give of ourselves so that we would receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very good. You guys impress me. The Lord speaks to you. You know, whatever. Like Susie did a great job. Jack and Debbie did a great job today. Pat did an awesome job Wednesday night teaching. But he's not here. He's back. Oh, he's always back there. Yeah, that did a great job. So I know you guys are, are in your word and hearing from God, and that's that's where we need to be. Amen. I'm uh, next Sunday. We're going to be blessed with uh, Doctor Pastor Paulus Massey. Uh, he was with us about this time last year. Um, he is from Pakistan, and uh, just to give you a little uh, little insight, he he, play, he was planning churches in Pakistan. Uh, and he, you know, he has, he had several rounds with the Taliban, and uh, he is now in, in the United States. Uh, God has done some great and mighty things through him, and um, just blessed that he's going to come and, and speak to us next uh, next Sunday. Uh, he's also going to be at the Full Gospel Businessman's Fellowship Saturday night, so uh, if you want to get a ticket and go to that, you can still... 
Uh, you can still sign up and go to that. That's at the uh, O'Neill Senior, Senior Center. I think the dinner starts, at, there's a dinner, or you can just go to the service. Dinner starts at 6, and uh, the uh, 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 service starts at 7, I believe. So, and uh, the dinner, I think, is pretty, it's pretty reasonable. It's like 6 or 8 bucks. Yeah, six dollars. <laughs> yeah, so. Bank steak. steak. <laughs> yeah. So, if, encourage you if you want to go hear him Saturday night, but he's going to be with us on Sunday morning. And uh, that's a good thing. And so, I didn't want to start anything new, and so I'm going to finish up with what I have been speaking with about for the last three or four weeks, about transforming our minds. And what we're going to do today, uh, I tell Caleb my title right now, uh, Lives Transformed by the Word of God. Because uh, he, at last three or four Sundays, he texted me, he's like, hey, what's the title of your sermon? <laughs> so, uh, and also, I want to commend Caleb as well. He puts the services on Facebook, so you can, if you want to go, it's just audio, right? It's just audio on there. It's on YouTube. What's that? It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube, I'm sorry. It's on YouTube. Um, and so you can go there and and, uh, and listen to the services, and we're working on getting a camera, so we can, you know, I need something with 10 pounds extra on me. 15, right? I, I'm, oh, yeah, that's right. Friday night's God, God's Girls at Grandma Deer's house. Uh, 7 p.m., right? Yes. Uh, if you have any questions, you can see Lori or Debbie about that. So all the ladies are invited uh, to come and be a part of that. Uh, so, um, Peggy and I went Friday night to see the movie Risen. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, you know, the, the, uh, the commercial on TV talks about how it's, the Bible or the Hollywood finally got it right. Uh, uh, they do have all of the things and the all of the sequence and all the things. It, it it is as right as any movie, but it's it's also fiction. I mean the the lead character of the movie is not in the Bible, so uh, he he may be somewhere else, but he is a. Uh, a, uh, what's the one above a centurion? Uh, tribune. He's a tribune. He's like the main, one of the main guys in the army. Right under Caesar. Or not under Caesar. Right under uh, Pontius Pilate. And uh, it, it's really good. I won't steal any thunder. Well, you guys know what happened. I mean, you, you know what? I was finally thrilled to see a movie. I was, I was finally thrilled to see a movie that they they showed Jesus resurrected. Amen. You know that the, the passion ends with boom. Yeah. You see it, okay, and it's over. So, uh, just get to the good part and end the movie. That, that, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, Lori. Um, also, uh, the St. Bernard's Catholic Church is going to do the passion, people of the passion, play. Um, I believe it's March 5th and 6th, and I'll get, <coughs> I'll have better times, but I want to try to get our teens to go, but if anybody else wants to go, it's free, and it's fun. I mean, it's it's also based on characters that were at the Passion at yeah. the time, so, I mean, you know, it's kind of fictional, but yet, anyways, it's very good. Yeah. <clears throat> it's what could have happened, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things, like the Risen movie. The Bible doesn't speak say that it did that this happened, but there's nothing that says it didn't either. So, uh, but the parts about the disciples and where they went and Jesus right raising from the dead and and where they went afterwards and Jesus appearing to them and uh, uh, you know as they were hiding out, all that stuff is true, uh, and it's 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 pretty well done and I enjoyed it. It, it was a good good movie. Um, of course. We went, we went to the 4.30 or something like that, so it was only six bucks or something, so I helped me enjoy it a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. And we got about 30 minutes to, to uh, talk about some lives that have been transformed by the Word of God. Uh, Romans chapter 12, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. It says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And here's what we're going to talk about today. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, as we open your word today, Lord, and as we receive it, open our hearts that we might be transformed and changed into the image of Christ. Open our hearts that we might hear you. Give us ears to hear and obedient hearts to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This scripture, you know, we've been talking about the fact that the Bible says that as we think in our hearts, so are we. And so as we, the thoughts that go through our head and what we think about ourselves and what we believe about ourselves is really important. And one of the things, you know, one of the things that we need to get to as Christians is to start believing that I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Right? Not, not that, oh, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm worthless. I'm useless. I'm, I'm this. I'm that. No, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Yes, on my own, I am nothing. But with God, all things are possible. Right? Amen. And, that, and we, need to, we need to begin to believe in our hearts that God has forgiven us of our sins and transferred us and changed us from the taking us from this kingdom of death and put us into the kingdom of life. And we and we need to begin to understand that I'm not from here. This is the world that I live in right now, but where we belong is in eternity with God. Hallelujah. That we're not we're not subjects of the earth, we are subjects of heaven. Amen. And, and we need to begin to live that way now. Um, not, believe, not, not be moved and changed by what we see with our physical eyes and hear with our physical ears. And not believe that that's more real than what the scriptures say about us here. You know, regardless of our circumstances. I mean, you, think about, you, you think about people in Somalia or, or Africa or China or anywhere that, that Christians are being persecuted... Um, yeah, we, we talk, well, we're being persecuted here. Well, not unto death. Um, the, the way they are in, in uh, Iraq and Iran and those places where uh, you, you, they find out you're a Christian and they kill you. I mean, those people, for them to be able to profess Jesus Christ in the face of death, that's, that's faith. You know, the, I think about the little girl at Columbine where they say that they, you know, the, the one gun that put a gun to her head and said, renounce Jesus, and she wouldn't do it. And he killed her. You know, that, that's faith. That's where we, you know, we need to get to the place. You know, we can all, you can only do those things when your eyes aren't on this world. Amen. When our focus is on this world, you know, we want to hold on to this world. But when our focus is on Jesus... When our focus is on the fact that, you know, I've done two funerals in the last couple of weeks. So when I read that scripture, uh, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians, where, where the scriptures say, you know, we live in an earthly tent right now. But we're in this tent and, and what's our spirit inside of us is groaning to be with God. Because we have a, we have a tent and a, and a body that's, that's not made with earthly hands. We have a body waiting for us in heaven that's made, that's a tabernacle that is eternal. And, and, and inside we groan to be with that body. We groan to be with Jesus because as long as we're in this body, you know, we're away from God. But when we get in that body, we're going to be present with the Lord. Amen? That's where our thinking, need, our thinking needs to change. Look, I, I'm, I'm the subject of heaven. These are the laws that I live by, not the laws, not the laws necessarily the laws of this land. But this word says that as good Christians we obey the law of the land, right? And this is contained all the law of the prophets. I'm slinging stuff around here. But anyway, here's what I want to talk about today. It says that we are to present. The scripture says we are to present our. It's okay, Jack. I'll get it later. It's, you know, there's nothing. There's not important. Um, Unless it's bothering anybody out there. I'm just kidding. That'd be fine. Um, in, in light of God's mercy, in light of the fact that He has saved us and, and delivered us by the blood of His Son, 
and, and he has given us that great love, poured out that love to us, as Debbie was talking about today, taking the nails, allowing, you know, going to the cross willingly, allowing, taking those beatings. But, but he did all that for us. In light of that mercy, we should present our bodies a living sacrifice. Every day we should get up and say, Father, I'm here to serve you today. Amen. You you died for me so that I could be that I could be born again, that I could come in and I can call you my father. I don't have to, I'm not subject to this to this world alone anymore, but I'm a, I'm a citizen of heaven because of what you did for me. In lieu of that, I should present myself a living sacrifice and, and renew my, and not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And that's what this scripture is for. It is for the renewing of our mind. And it says when our mind's renewed, after our mind is renewed, then we will be able to understand, we will be able to see what God, we'll be able to test and approve what God's perfect will is. What is God's purpose and will for my life? You know, that's one of the, that's one of the big things that each and every one of us needs to find out. You know what? Okay. All right. Well, I, I've given my heart to Christ and I belong to Him. I'm not a citizen of this world anymore, but I'm a citizen of heaven. Well, what now? Well, God has called you to a purpose. God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And He built you and made you for a specific purpose. He has a calling on your life. He didn't just call you out of, out of darkness into light to just keep doing what you were doing before. He has a purpose for your life. And so we're going to talk. We're going to look at some men. And I, I'm going to give you scriptures. And so if you're, if you're taking notes, um, I'll give you some scriptures. We're not going to read all of them because we don't have enough time. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you where they are and tell you pretty much what they say. But the first guy I want to look at is Noah. We have this guy Noah. Remember Noah? Noah's going along. He's living in, I mean, you know, you, we think we live in rough times. Noah lived in rough times. You know, Elijah said, Elijah, you know, he, he, he said, well, you know, God, I'm the only one left in preaching the gospel. You know, I'm the only one that really loves you. And God's like, no, nah, I still got 7,000 more. <laughs> the Bible says this about Noah. He was the only righteous man left on earth. The only, can you imagine being the only righteous man left on earth? And God speaks to him. God speaks to him and says, Noah, I want you to build a boat. I'm going to send a flood. And, and Noah, Noah heard the word of the Lord. And his, I don't know what Noah did before. He probably wasn't a boat builder. You know? Because the, the Bible historians say that at this point, and when Noah lived, the earth, it didn't rain. Amen. Then the earth was covered in a mist and it didn't rain. It was just, you know, it was just like a big terrarium, mm -hmm. you know. But God says, build a boat. I want you to build an ark. <coughs> and I want you to build it big. I want you to build it and take two of this, two of every kind of animal, of every unclean animal, and seven of every clean animal. And Noah's life changed. He, at the point... When the word of the when he heard the word of the Lord in his heart, he ceased to do whatever he was doing before, and he began to build that boat because that's what God said to do, and it was and it was salvation to him and to all of his family and to all of us because we are all descendants, one way or another, of Noah, Amen, and Noah's sons who were who were saved with him. Okay? Let's look at Abram. Abram well, oh, Noah, the story of Noah is in Genesis 6, chapter, or Genesis chapter 6, verse 11 through 22. Abram's in Genesis 12, verse 1 through 5. Here we got a guy, here we have a guy who, whose dad, we know from, uh, not from the Bible, but from the Jewish writings, historical writings, that Abram's dad was a, he built idols to the moon god. And he lived uh, what was the land of Ur? Where our Noah was from, or Abram was from, I think. Ur of Chaldee, something like that. Well, Abram's gone along, and God speaks to him. 
And God says, Abram, this is Genesis 12, 1 through 5, Abram, he says, get up from that place where you're living right now and go to a place that I'm going to show you. And when you go to that place, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your descendants like the sands of the seashore. And, and through you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. You'll be my people and I'll be your God. And you know what Abram did? Abram, Abram was living there with his dad. He was living there in the, in the land that he grew up in. It was, it was his home. He got up and he left. And he began to follow God. And he began to listen to God. When he heard the word of the Lord, his life changed. You know, and, and as we go through these, I want you to remember the scripture we read last week. My ways are higher than your way. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I've said it a lot. You know, God's one of the thing, places we have to get with God is to realize God's plan for your life is better than your plan for your life. Amen. And to come to the place where we can trust Him in that. And know that when we listen to God and when we hear His word, when we read His word, and when He speaks to us, his plans, his, the plans that he has for you, what he's going to speak to you is a way to give you hope in the future. A way to lift you up, not bring you down. Because his ways are above your ways. And his thoughts are above your thoughts. Okay, let's look at another guy. How about Moses? Moses, Moses was a prince in Egypt. Got kicked out for killing a guy, right? Had to run for his life. Of course, if you watch the Ten Commandments, he got exiled. Uh, the Bible tells us that he just ran for his life. And, and, uh, because your old brother was after him. <laughs> That's a joke. <clears throat> but Moses goes along. He, he, you know, he's a, he's a prince in Egypt. And he goes, he ends up being a shepherd. He ends up in the land of Midian. Marries a lady there who's, who, uh, uh whose father is a, a righteous man. But he ends up being a shepherd. And he's shepherding the sheep. And all of a sudden, one of these days, uh, one, he looks up on the hill and he sees this bush that's burning. And he goes up and he looks at the bush. And the, bush be, and the voice of the Lord begins to speak in him, uh, to him out of, the, out of this burning bush. and saying, Moses, take off your shoes because where you're standing now is holy ground. I've heard the cries of my people in Egypt. And I'm going to send you. And you're going to deliver them. You're going to set them free. And, they, and Moses is thinking like, oh my God, I can't go back there. They'll kill me. As soon as I go back there, they're going to kill me. I can't go back there. And, and you know what? I can't talk very plain. So, you know, send somebody else. And God gets mad. And finally Moses yields to the word of the Lord. And he goes back to Egypt. And, and Israel is delivered out of the hands of the... You know, Moses could have spent the rest of his life being a shepherd and taking care of Jethro's sheep. Maybe he'd been happy. Maybe he wouldn't. But God had a higher calling for him. Amen. God had a more important calling <laughs> from him. And when he heard the word of the Lord, it transformed him and renewed his mind. And he went for it. He decided, I'm going to lay down my shepherding sheep staff down and I'm going to go shepherd the people of the Lord. Amen. The story of Moses is fascinating. <laughs> it's funny, it makes me laugh, you know. At one point in time, God says to Moses, Moses, just get out of there. I, let me kill them. I'll kill them all. I'll kill them all. I'll make a new nation out of you. And Moses is like, no, God, you can't do that. And then there's another time where Moses says, God, kill them all. <laughs> you, can, you can start a new bunch. Kill them all. And, but anyway. But Moses' life was transformed by hearing the word of God. And, 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 and knowing that God has a plan. When, when, God, when Moses heard God's plan and he yielded to God's plan. You know, we pro if, Moses, if Moses would have stayed being a shepherd in Midian, you know, he might have a name somewhere written on the back of some pyramid somewhere in Egypt that nobody ever knew. But he ended up being the guy who wrote, you know, a good portion of the Bible, the first five books of the Bible. He is the name... That, that everyone, just about every person of faith in the world knows his name. <clears throat> and not only that, he's a child of God. Let's look at the children of Israel. In a bad way. Okay? In a bad way. Moses, Moses brought the children of Israel out 
And this is in Exodus chapter 20, verses 18 through 21. Moses brought the children of Israel out. God told him, you know, bring them out here. Don't let them go up on the mountain, but I'm going to speak to them from the mountain. And the thunder rolled on top of the mountain, and the fire burned, and, and the lightning flashed, and God began to speak to the children of Israel. And he said, I am the Lord your God who delivered you out of Egypt. You will have no gods before me. Thou shalt make unto thee no, uh, no graven image. And began to speak the Ten Commandments. And the, the children of Israel standing at the bottom of the hill. And they had only, you know, they they worshipped and seen the gods of Egypt who never spoke. Who never moved. Who were made with hand, you know, made with human hands. And this God is speaking to them from the mountain. And when he gets done, they look at Moses and they say, Moses, don't ever let that happen again. Don't let him speak to us anymore. You tell us what he said and we'll do it. Did they? No. They did not. They rejected the word of the Lord. They rejected what God said. And just a few chapters later, they're building a golden calf. Going back to the gods of, of Egypt that they, that they served before. And so they heard the word of the Lord, but they did not receive the word of the Lord. They were not transformed. They did not allow their mind to be renewed. They went back to where they were before. You know, the, the Bible says a dog returns to his vomit. And that's exactly what the children of Israel did. I know that's gross, but it's in there. Okay? It's true. Um, you know, they, they, they had an opportunity to allow. I mean, to say, you know, gosh, man, now that's a God. One that, can, one that can shake the ground and make the fire roll and speak to us from a mountain. That's a God. That piece of gold over there on, you know, that looks like a, that's got a human head and a lion's body. Uh, that's not really a God compared to that. But they didn't allow that to happen. They did not receive the word of God and allow it to transform their life. Look at Gideon. Gideon's in, in Judges chapter 6. I love Gideon. This is, Gideon speaks to all of us. Gideon, you got to understand, and, and when Gideon's living, the Midianites are, what would happen? The Israelites lived, <clears throat> and they would, they would plant their fields, they plant their vineyards, they live in their homes, and, and when the harvest time came, the Midianites, would, who were a roving band, would just come to Israel and plunder everything. And when they would come, the, the Israelites would go hide in the caves and the mountains just to... You know, hope, hopefully they could save enough of their, their produce that they could make it to the next year. When we find Gideon, Gideon is in a, he's in a wine press threshing wheat because he's afraid to be out being seen by anybody who's afraid the many nights to catch him out. And an angel comes and stalks to him and says, Hail, mighty man of valor. <coughs> you know, Gideon's... You know, you know, he's threshing wheat in a, in a it's not, you know, that's where you throw it up in the air and let the wind blow through it. No, it doesn't work very good inside a wine press because there's no doors. But anyway, hail mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, talking to me? Are you, are you talking to me? Oh, you can't be talking to me because I, my, my father's clan is the least in our tribe. Uh, he says, I'm the least of my father's son, and, and the clan that I live in is the least of our tribe, and our tribe is the least of all of Israel. So I am the small of the small of the small of the small, so you can't be talking to me and calling me mighty man of valor. And the angel said, oh yeah, hell, you mighty man of valor. God, you are gonna, God is going to do great things for you. For you. He's going to use you to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. <laughs> and you know what? It took, it took Gideon a little bit of time. He had to put out a couple of fleeces before he believed the Lord. But he believed the Lord. And God used Gideon, the least of the least of the least, when he heard the word of the Lord and accepted the word of the Lord and allowed his mind to be transformed. You know, Gideon's mind had to be transformed from, I'm... The small, the small, the small. So I may be the small, the small, the small, but I serve a big God. I serve the God who says I'm more than a conqueror. I serve the God who says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
I serve the God who delivered, it, delivered Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. And so he can deliver us out of the hands of the Midianites. And God used Gideon to do that. How about the disciples? Look at the disciples. Got some fishermen, tax collector. Uh, what else? Just some, you know, Doctor, some regular guys. And Jesus says, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they got up and they left. They heard the word of the Lord, and they received it, and they believed it, and they followed it. See, it's not about how much word we hear. It's how much word we hear and obey. It's how much word we hear and do. Right? Amen. How much word we, we, we put into practice. Because if we just hear it, it won't transform us. If we just hear what God says, it doesn't change us any. We have to put it into practice. We have to do like Abram did and get up and go when God says get up and go. <clears throat> in Matthew, that was Matthew 4, verse 19, the calling of the disciples. You want to, you want to see that. But then uh, later in Matthew 28, Jesus is getting ready to go. You guys have all heard this, 16 through 20. Jesus says, all authority in heaven has been given unto me. So now you go and preach the gospel to all the nations of the world. Amen. Go and make disciples. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Now did they did they hear that? They heard it. Did they do it? Kind of. Eventually they did. But they heard the word of the Lord. They knew what God's calling on their life was to be. They knew that God used them, or was going to use them to preach the gospel. And, and to continue the kingdom of heaven. Continue the works that Jesus did. And then in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. Good Pentecostal people all know this. Right? <laughs> I'm going to read this one. Alright? Acts chapter 1, 4 through 8. I can find it. Oh, Crystal can beat me there. It says, on one occasion while he was sitting with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it's not it's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the, utter, uh, and to the ends of the earth. You know, one of the cool parts of, of that Risen movie, um, it kind of ends, it ends in Galilee. You know, the disciples, Jesus appeared to the disciples in, in Jerusalem. But then he told them to go to Galilee. And, and there in John chapter 20, um, Jesus said, or Peter says, you know what? Hey, I'm going to go fishing. And they say, well, we'll go fishing too. And they all go fishing. And they fish all night. And they catch nothing. And they come back. And when they're coming back, there's, they see this guy on the, on the other bank. And he says, cast your nets out on me. The right side of the boat. And Peter's response is, well, you know, we fished all night. We didn't catch anything. But because you say so. And they did, and their nets were full of breaking. You know, that's exactly the way Jesus called them. And at the at the point where at the point where Peter saw the nets full again, he knew it was the Lord, and he dives in the water and goes after Jesus. And that's really well done in, in that movie. But, but after they left Galilee, they went back to Jerusalem. They heard the word of the Lord. I want you to wait in Jerusalem because you're going to receive the gift that the Father has given, to you, has, has given to you. You'll receive the Holy Spirit. And when you receive, receive the Holy Spirit, you'll receive power. You will be my witnesses in all the world. And that's exactly what they did. These men who were afraid and hiding in the upper room heard the word of the Lord, knew the word of the Lord, knew what God asked them. They were being obedient to the word of the Lord and God sent the Holy Spirit on them and it changed 
and transform their lives. And they have transformed and upset the world. That's a good amen right there. But that's a fact. You know, we're, we're still, we still live in the effects of these 11 gods. Who, when Jesus was walking with them, this should give you some, this should build your faith. When Jesus was walking with the disciples, do you know there were two levels of faith that Jesus said they had? Do you know what they were? Little? Little's one of them. None is the other. <laughs> he told me on, on more than one occasion, he says, Oh, you have little faith. And on another occasion, he says, You know, have you no faith? And, and so, you know, these men, these men who, they were following Jesus. They heard the word of the Lord. They were following Jesus. But when, when they were obedient to the word, and they did what Jesus asked them to do, it always worked out for them. You know, when he said, when he, he said, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm giving you my authority. I'm sending you 12 out. You go preach the gospel. They did. Came back. Sent out the 70. They came back. You know, rejoicing that, that the demons were subject to them. When he, they heard the word of the Lord, go back to Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. They waited on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was given to them. And these men who were afraid were in the street preaching the gospel. And they turned Jerusalem upside down. And, the, and then they, they not only turned Jerusalem upside down, they went to preach in Judea, Samaria, and now the gospel has gone all over the world. Because of these 11 men who heard the word of the Lord. They could have kept fishing. Matthew could have kept collecting taxes. They could have kept doing the job that they were doing. But God had a plan a way that was higher than their ways. A plan that was more important than their ways because it was His way. And that's why it's, it's so important for us to hear the word of the Lord and read the word of the Lord. And I'll tell you, God, I believe God, and, it's, and I told you some examples today, that God can speak to us without this. It's true. But I'll tell you, I've had God speak to me more through this Many, 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 many more times through this than without this. Without Amen. This. You know, when, when God, when, when you're reading the scriptures of God and something, and God makes something just impressed upon your heart and impressed upon your mind. That's called rhema. That's God speaking to you. That's a rhema word from God. God is bringing what this scripture out and impressing it upon you to transform you into what that that scripture is and to transform you into the image of Christ because like we said last week this is the essence of Christ Amen. right in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God right and without this nothing that has been created has been created only through this Amen. the spoken word of God amen yeah. and so you know the way that we think is going to determine we're either going to think earthly thoughts and, and according to this world, or we will think heavenly thoughts and according to God's will and God's purposes. And that's why it's so important for us to allow this word to renew our minds and to transform us into the image of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, one of the things, one of the things, I'm, I'm going to close with this, one of the things, Dottie's not here to hear that. Tell her all in close once today. <laughs> not done yet. <laughs> oh, shoot. Now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things Pat brought up this week on Wednesday night, and we, he was talking about his, his, he got his picture in the paper for picking up trash in China, and it opened up some doors for him to get to preach the gospel. And so that was a, that was a good thing. But one of the things that he, he talked about, kind of as a sidelight, was this: that when we go out into the world, it's more important. It's more important than the what we're doing. It's who we're representing, and the fact that um, you know 
you can know what the scriptures say, but the most important thing is that we know Jesus. Amen. And that we have a relationship with him. And that when we when we go out into the world, that we are we are loving people and and being, you know, being that merciful, blessing, uh, holy people that God desires from us. And we're representing Christ. Amen. And so, you know, the, the what would Jesus do comes to mind. Uh, maybe not necessarily what would Jesus do, but how would Jesus do it? Amen. How would Jesus minister to this person? And we can, we can know that when we have a relationship with him. When we speak to him. When, when his word is speaking to us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. I want to pray over you today. And uh, pray that you have a blessed week. I pray that that your desire... You have a second close. One of, the, one of the Beatitudes says, Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness... They shall be filled. You know what? Um, I've, I've tried sleeping on my Bible. It doesn't work very well. Osmosis you know, doesn't work. Uh, it does in some physical, but not with me. So I have to have a, I have to get this out. And, and I, I will challenge you that if you're not a Bible reader, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, you, when you start when you start reading the scriptures and reading what it says and who it says that you are and how much God loves you, uh, you'll want to read more. I'll give you that challenge today. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over these folks. I thank you, Lord, that they are a family of God. I thank you, Lord, that they are an army of God that God has called, that you have called to serve you. And Lord, we want to walk in those ways that are higher than our ways. We don't want to be people... Who just walk in in the realm of this world because we know that this world is finite, that it is coming to an end, that there is no hope and no future on planet Earth, but there is a hope and a future with you. And Father, we want to walk with you and serve you. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. And Lord, I, we we want to sur we want to surrender ourselves to you every day, present ourselves as living sacrifices to walk with you. That we might walk in your word that says we are more than conquerors. That we are, that we can show the love of the world. That you have, a, you all authority has been given to you. And so we can go and preach the gospel and love people into the kingdom. And Father, we just bless you for that today. Give us a, a hunger and a thirst for your word and for your spirit. Give us a hunger and a thirst to be in your presence. To be in your house. To be... Uh, just engulfed in your love. And Father, I just thank you that as we begin to taste and see that you are good, that you'll give us and increase our hunger and our desire for you. I bless these people today. I bless them with health. I speak against the valley crud or whatever we call it, Lord, that we might walk in health and breathe clearly and be, and be a people who represent you. Father, I pray over our children that they're healthy, that they're obedient, Lord, that they do well in their studies. Father, that you are, that even right now you are preparing them to serve you. And Father, I just pray that you give us wisdom when it comes to disciplining them and raising them. And that we might train them up in the way that they go. Lord, I bless our marriages. That we can be examples to a world that, that really has a bad uh, um, view of what marriage is. Lord, may our married couples represent what you, uh, what you want. What you want us to be. Uh, husbands that love their wives and and, and wives that submit to their husbands and that they walk in love together in a, in a partnership, Father, to raise their kids and to, and to be examples to this world. Lord, I pray as we leave here today, we go in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit and in the joy of the Lord. And Father, I pray that when we go to work or go to school or whatever we do tomorrow, we belong to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I love you. I'll see you uh, Wednesday. Don't forget, God's Girls on Friday. And Pastor Paulus will be here on next Sunday.